But I think this can bring us to a broader, or a broader sense of question that the systematic of information or your knowledge. So we, if we think about as an individual, when we try to learn, yeah. we read a, a lot of books, yeah. then we learn from different sources or from the theory or practice. Yeah. Then finally, as one person, that you need to uh, systematize, make, make the, all the knowledge inside your brain into a system, right? then you can apply it, but, or if there's a mess, then you cannot understand that. Right. But if we think about the legal system, yeah. And we also mentioned that like the case is independent, the probability, and also the procedure to discover. All these actually are different variables or small elements. Yeah. And the question is if we f maybe the law itself is not sufficient to put all this together. I mean the law means the scholarship. Yes. You mine it like the probability, actually it is something from outside. But yeah. I think that's very important for you to understand the fraud or causation. I think that's right. So, yeah. so what would the law and economic do to help to let us make the whole legal theory more into a unified system to understand what is the standard to consider the verdicts? Well, I think, I think the answer is we, we need to develop uh, good models of probabilistic cause. Mm -hmm. So we need to know what are the variables that increase or diminish the probability of a certain kind of accident happening. Mm -hmm. And what we want is a full account of what all those variables are. Yep. And once we know what all the variables are, then we can talk about the legal instruments by which they could be controlled. Mm -hmm. So for example, a rule of negligence will control mm -hmm. how carefully people, mm -hmm. how careful people are. Mm -hmm. when they engage in an activity, but not the frequency with which they engage in the activity. Exactly. For that, we need another instrument like, like taxes. Mm -hmm. So I think the law and economic analysis has um, been very useful in distinguishing these different contributors to the probability of an accident. Indeed, the distinction between activity level and care was, it was actually Steve Chevelle who made that distinction, and I think it's just a fundamental distinction in the law. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, hard, mm -hmm. it's hard for me to think about tort law before that distinction was there. Okay. It's just too important. But if we go back to the uh, economic theory history, that if my memory is right, and uh, actually use the text to control, like the pig, we call pigo, pigo. That's an economist, very famous. He he tried to use the text to control the externality. Right. And right. Uh, so, if we think from this this uh, perspective, it looks like he tried to use the text system as a substitution of the full liability in court. I think do, that's right. Do you think that's very persuasive? Um, well, I think that the... Um, Transactions costs of the tort liability system are very different from the transactions costs of the tax system. Mm -hmm. So if you have, if you can control the activity level mm -hmm. by both means, which you can do, mm -hmm. that's to say if you want to discourage an activity, you can tax it, which makes it more expensive to engage in the activity and so there'll be less of it. Okay. On the other hand, instead of taxing it, what you can have, you can have a rule of strict liability, mm -hmm. which will increase the liability burden from engaging in the activity, which will also dampen mm -hmm. the behavior, cause people to engage in less of the activity. Mm -hmm. So the question is whether the the tax or the um, rule of strict liability mm -hmm. is going to be more efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's going to depend a lot on the transactions cost. Mm -hmm. Now the characteristic of the tax is that you have to collect it from everybody who engages in the activity. Mm -hmm. Whereas with the strict liability rule, you only have to collect it for people who cause the harm. Yeah, that's right? the, I think he's, uh, the toll the fees at this time is the, all the costs bear. He yes. bear all the costs. That's right. So it's, 
one way of thinking about it is that the the uh, tax is collected ex ante mm -hmm. before we know whether there's an accident we, we collect the tax mm -hmm. the liability is collected ex post mm -hmm. only after we know there's an accident and who caused it mm -hmm. so uh, determining who caused an accident is very expensive. A trial is very expensive, mm -hmm. but you don't have to do it very much. Because you've got a tax system that lets people to do it. Yeah, it's it's the with liability with the liability system it applies to fewer people, but each determination is more expensive. Okay. With a tax system it applies to a lot of people. Okay. But each determination is cheap. Okay, I understand. So you have to ask yourself: Are costs going to be lower on? In aggregate, in total, mm -hmm. if we make a lot of people pay in advance through the tax system, yep. or if we make only a few people pay after an expensive trial. Mm -hmm. But even a trial, you can see they got a signaling effort <coughs> yeah. for other people to observe that actually that's a for that's a tort, and yeah, they are that's paying right. for that. So yeah. there's also effort of this. To tell other person, that, especially the punitive damage. Yeah, I agree. That's, that's right. a very strong signal. That's right. That to tell the other people, you can see here clearly. That's also somehow the not just from the ex post, but from ex enter. If for the future cases. Yes, that's right. Well, in law and economics, we're always concerned with the incentive effects in the future. Yep. What are the incentive effects going to be of the rule in the future? Mm -hmm. um, so in that sense, law and economics is always concerned with the future. Mm -hmm. However, it is the case that the tax has to be collected from everybody, mm -hmm. and the the uh, liability only has to be collected mm -hmm. after a determination of cause has mm -hmm. been made mm -hmm. against some people. Mm -hmm. So even though the our concern in law and economics is only mm -hmm. with the incentive effects that apply in the future. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, there's a different time structure to the information if it's yep. a tax than a, than it's the, if it, with a tax than with liability. So as we mentioned, the uh, liability, the way actually, uh, okay, carry out by the court, or we can see that's a tax we also talk about, it might just try to control the activities. But we also got Actually, we got a theory, very famous, as we know, that the calabrises, property rule and liability rule, and inalienability. So the question is, we can see clearly that if that's compensation, that's the liability rule. If that's injunction, that's property rule. So how about a tax? Which one yeah. it exactly it is to fit into this? Property yeah. rule and property rule and liability rule system. Well, that's very good. Um, <clears throat> what I would say is mm -hmm. that um, the uh, with a tax on an activity, mm -hmm. you're liable for engaging in the activity. Mm -hmm. When he talks about a liability rule, he doesn't usually mean that. He doesn't mean you're liable for engaging in the activity. He means you're liable for causing an accident. Mm -hmm. So, in a sense, you could say a tax is a kind of liability rule, mm -hmm. but it's a very special one because you're liable for engaging in the, acti in the activity, not for causing the harm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, the conclusion? What's the conclusion? Well, I think that um, Pigou has uh, made a tremendous con uh, uh, contribution because, you see, I believe that uh, the uh, tax, taxes are necessary in order to pay for government. Mm -hmm. uh, but I believe that throughout the world we tax the wrong things. Why? Because, because, we, could, because we tax things that are good. Mm -hmm. And we and therefore we discourage things that are good, whereas we ought to tax things that are bad and only discourage things that are bad. Mm -hmm. In Pigou, Piguvian taxes are collected against things that that are bad. Mm -hmm. That's the way we ought to reorganize our tax system. Mm -hmm. For for example, 
making money is good. Mm -hmm. It's good for people to make money. Mm -hmm. We want people to make money. We mm -hmm. want them to be wealthy and to be comfortable and mm -hmm. have the necessities of life. Mm -hmm. But to pollute the air is bad. Yep. So what we ought to do is we ought to increase the taxes on pollution and decreases the tax and de decreases the, the taxes on income. Okay, I understand. And we should we should do this systematically. There's there's lots of externalities in the Pigouvian sense, particularly environmental destruction and congestion mm -hmm. and risk. These are the three. Envir the environment, mm -hmm. when you harm the environment, you should have to pay a tax. Mm -hmm. uh, when you uh, congest, when you cause congestion, like on the roads, mm -hmm. you should pay a tax. Mm -hmm. And when you impose risk on others, mm -hmm. when you expose them to the risk of an accident, you should pay a tax. Mm -hmm. If we collect the taxes on all those things, we could do away with a lot of the taxes that we have now that are discouraging good activities, mm -hmm. activities that we don't want to discourage. Mm -hmm. That's my view. And here, because the, when we talk about the tax system, yeah. maybe some theory mentioned the tax is not just for the uh, try to mitigate the loss, in the, especially in tall, case, tall cases. But you can see that maybe some uh, <coughs> The consideration is that tax, tax the purpose is for the finance. Yes. It's not just a loss control system. How well, can you balance well, this? Well, that, that's, see, when you, when you tax things that are bad, you're doing two things that are useful at once. Mm -hmm. One thing is you're raising money for the government. Mm -hmm. we, need, we need to pay for public goods. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, you're raising money to pay for public goods. Mm -hmm but you're also discouraging activities that are bad. Mm -hmm. So you gain on both counts. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you put a tax on the bridge to uh, mm -hmm. drive across the bridge to San Francisco mm -hmm. and the bridge is congested, mm -hmm. put a tax on it, you have two advantages. You get more money mm -hmm. that you can use to improve the roads, mm -hmm. but you also discourage people from You're slowing each other down by mm -hmm. congesting the, the bridge. Mm -hmm. They're both good. Now, the problem with, so when you tax things that are bad, like congestion, you have, a, you have two goods that result, mm -hmm. the revenue and the discouraging mm -hmm. of the bad behavior. Mm -hmm. But when you tax income, mm -hmm. you get the uh, revenues for the government, which is good. Mm -hmm. They can buy roads or other public goods with it. Mm -hmm. but you have the bad effect of discouraging people from making money, mm -hmm. earning money. Yep. So you have to trade off yep. the good against the bad. But if you just tax the bad things, you wouldn't mm -hmm. have to trade off. So uh, what you mean is actually that the tax system might not just for the finance to raise money, but also might place somehow a substitution for the toll law. Yes. And if we had if we had enough, if we had enough taxes on bad things, mm -hmm. we might not have to tax good things at all. Yep. That would be that would be the hope. It's hard to say because we don't have a systematic set of of taxes on congestion, mm -hmm. pollution, and risk. Uh, but there's a lot of money that can be raised from taxes on congestion, pollution, and risk. The problem is. This is the kind of basic economics mm -hmm. that's hard for people to understand. Mm -hmm. It's hard for people to act on politically. But we can also think about that, and the tax system is also a story about redistribution. Yes. And somehow, maybe the toll may play some sort of that role, especially the defendant is a rich person. Well, this is... Um, what do you think about this? Well, I think it, it, it depends uh, very much on the presence of insurance. Uh, because I think that uh, where there's insurance, um, there is in, what insurance, insurance distributes income mm -hmm. from the people who are uninjured to the people who are injured. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That's to say, everybody, everybody has to, if you have to buy insurance, mm -hmm. You have to buy it whether you're, say, medical insurance. You mm -hmm. have to buy it whether you're sick or not. Mm -hmm. So all the people who aren't sick mm -hmm. 
pay for the insurance, mm -hmm. and then the people who get sick mm -hmm. get to take take that money and spend it on their health. Mm -hmm. So it's a redistribution from being well to being right. sick. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if there's no insurance, mm -hmm. then tort liability mm -hmm. redistributes from the people who cause harm to the people who are harmed. Mm -hmm. Now, if there's no insurance, you might want to think about distribution. Because sometimes, say you're in a poor country. Well, I, I was just in Mexico. Now, Mexico is not a poor country. It's a middle-income country, but it's mm -hmm. not a rich country either. You know, it's not Europe, mm -hmm. but it's not Africa. It's a middle-income country. It's a middle-income country. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's very encouraging. There's been a lot of progress in Mexico, economically. But there's still a lot of Mexicans who are who don't have insurance. And mm -hmm. if if you're a Mexican peasant and you get hit by a motorist who has a car, mm -hmm. probably the p Mexican peasant is a lot poorer than the person who owns the car and is driving the car. Oh, so. And in those, and also the guy who's driving the car can buy insurance. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would like that driver to be liable for the medical costs. Because the that's the third party insurance. Yeah, it's which gonna, might it, be mandatory. It, and it's going to be it's going to be paid for by well, relatively wealthy people who own cars, mm -hmm. in order to subsidize people who get hurt. Who are relatively poor, uh, but we can see that's uh, different from uh, countries to country to country. Because yes. maybe uh, in some country, maybe the people driving are rich, but in some country, actually the people and the pedestrian is not a standard to measure. Absolutely, whether the people is rich. Absolutely, or that's the way it is now. Everybody has a car in America, so I mean, almost everybody except the very poorest people. Mm -hmm. I gotta go and do a, an exam of a student. Oh, I can understand. Then okay, one last small question. Yeah. Very, but maybe we can talk about yeah. it uh, later. Yeah. That actually about uh, we can see the in the insurance uh, law, and then you can see the we earlier mentioned that you can see you use age as a variable yeah. to consider how much fee you should yeah. pay for the insurance. Yeah. And, but for some people driving very carefully, that's unfair. It's actually. Yeah. How, how can you use a better mechanism to reveal yeah. the true nature of the person? Okay. Well, That's one of the great things about big data. Okay. See, with the computers, we're getting more and more information about people, mm -hmm. and we can change fundamentally insurance. Okay. Because we can have, know a lot more about people than just how old they are. Okay. And therefore, we can make the people who are dangerous pay more. Mm 